Hey, everybody, it's the Drive School Podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman. Pastor Brademeyer, you're back. How are you? I have survived Easter. That's good, right? God be praised. Like, yeah, it's always good that uh, Jesus made it back and so did we. Um, I have a little more trust in him coming back than us sometimes. Uh, <laughs> That's probably a safe bet. We made it. Um, we've been tackling questions. Um, we've been tackling sort of just sort of those those best of intention sort of practices. What do you got for us today? Well, you know, I, I thought it'd be good to talk about prayer. Um, it's something that we all learned in confirmation class, or if you know, you're not quite there yet, you will. You will learn these things. But I think it's good just to talk about what prayer is and what it isn't. And I don't know, maybe you grew up differently than me, but I grew up... Um, my parents are Lutherans. They're not Missouri Synod, but, you know, they're Lutherans. And they're Lutheran farmers, so they're kind of just, you know, no-nonsense, uh, basic Lutheran understanding of stuff type people, which is fine. And we prayed. We prayed every meal. We prayed at bedtime. Um, and that's just the habit that we had. But it didn't occur to me until I was well into college that nobody actually ever sat down with me and explained what prayer is. And I didn't have to think about it till I was actually working at a church in college <sighs> And a kid asked me, what is prayer? And I said, uh, that's a great question. I don't know. And so then I went and talked to my pastor. And unfortunately, my pastor wasn't much help at that time. But luckily, I did stumble upon a catechism, which helped uh, make sense of it a little bit. Sure. And it's one of those, because we know um, that, that prayer is, uh, it, well, it's mandated. It, it's it's something that Christians do. Uh, pray without ceasing gets to be just a, a, just, it's a nice little stick to hit somebody with whenever you, you think they're not being pious enough. And, and it, if it's one of those things that is always going on in the background and is, you know, you're supposed to do, but you're never taught how and you're never taught why it can very quickly go astray. You know, this is the problem with being Lutheran, right? Because you get into mm. some other uh, Christian traditions and they have like exact forms that prayers have to take. Sure. And we don't really get on that, you know, because I mean, if, if you read the back of the catechism, if you got one of the big fat ones that the Synod publishes, CPH publishes, you know, with the explanation, it's got a question there. What is prayer? And the answer is great. It's talking to God. That's what prayer is. It's, it's no more complicated than that. And since it's talking to God, there's a lot of ways to do that. It doesn't have to be one particular way. There are, sure, traditional forms, like the prayers that we have as the collects for the day in the service. They all tend to follow a roughly similar pattern, you know, mm. um, but they don't have to. Or like, you know, you'll hear a Baptist or an evangelical and they always close, in Jesus' name. Well, do you have to say those words to make the prayer count? Well, no. Praying in Jesus' name is a little more complicated than just having three words at the end of a prayer, right? I need to know him to for, for him to know when to stop listening. So when I go back to how I normally <laughs> talk, he's not mad at me for it. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because he shuts his ears off as soon as you say, in Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, then all the other words that come out are fine. Um, well, okay, so if it you're, you're telling me what prayer isn't, but you're still not telling me what prayer is outside of talking to God. But like, for, for why? Well, what would you talk to God about? I guess you could talk about a lot of things with God. Um, you know, he is your father. And as your loving father, he actually wants to hear from you. And he actually cares about what's going on in your life. So, you know, we, I like to start there when I teach this to people. Um, God actually cares about your life and he wants to hear from you. So there's a lot of different things we can pray for. We can pray for other people, what's going on in their life. We can pray and ask for forgiveness of sins. We can thank God for everything he's given us. And certainly there's a lot of things we can be thankful for. We can give him praise for all of his you know, deeds and acts and who he is as, as our God. And mm. we can also ask for things for ourselves. And, right. uh, you know, and, and what does God give us when we ask for things? Well, he gives us what he needs. Typically, it comes in the form of comfort. You know, not, not not every time we pray to God do we get exactly what we want, how we want it. You know, that's not what that, prayer is. Prayer is not. How uh, do I fix that? Because that's that's why I want to talk to God. <laughs> well, repent <laughs> and believe the gospel. That's that's how you fix that. No, but I mean, you you got to you got to sort of reckon with this though. Um, it, there are a lot of ways that we can sort of talk to God. Uh, we can bring Him prayer and praise and thanksgiving and petition and 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 all of these things. But if your heart is sort of bent inward in selfishness, it's going to sound different than if it is uh, open to to receiving His gifts. And so when I say you know you can just ask God for anything, I'm like, well, 
yeah, that that's great. But like if the vending machine only gave you chips, like one every eight times, you would go to a different vending machine or at least mm-hmm. try and figure out what's wrong with it. Um, I can talk to a, a counselor and have them affirm everything that I say. And God tells me some of the things that I want to say are, are wrong. Uh, I, I, I can just talk to myself uh, or, or have a friend who's just going to make jokes with me. And God doesn't talk back the way that I sometimes need him to when I feel lonely. So I, I hear where you're coming from. I really do. And I'm not trying to dismiss any of these, these things, but you, you sort of have to acknowledge that like if, if prayer is just sort of, I want to thank God for something, or I want to get something from God or, or tell him a joke or any of those things, I might be, I might be doing it wrong still. Right. Well, I think you, yes, I think you're right about that because the problem with the human heart is we're all pagans down inside. And this is how pagans relate to God or the gods or whatever's out there. They think we put something in and then the gods give us something back, right? So this is why I got to go sacrifice the chicken. If I sacrifice the chicken, then God, you know, the corn God will give me a good corn harvest. But we approach prayer this way. And so, you know, if I, I think back at some of the prayers I prayed, I remember when I was a little kid, um, I had a crisis of faith. I must have been 10. And I remember for whatever reason, I'd watched... Um, Pinocchio, you know, you wish upon a mm. shooting star and I saw a shooting star. So I wished upon a shooting star and I prayed to God for whatever reason I thought I needed to connect those things. And I said, you know, God, give me a thousand dollars and I'll believe in you. Right. And guess what I didn't get for Christmas that year? Cause it was right about Christmas time was a thousand dollars. I did not get that. And back in clearly there is 1996, no that was a pile of money, you know, for a little yeah. kid to have. <laughs> Still, I would, I would not turn my nose up. Um, <laughs> Well, I'd still take it. I mean, if yeah. anyone's out there wants to, I'm, I'm, I could give you my address. <laughs> right. Donations but, are welcome. Well, this is this is the issue, right? This is how we treat prayer. And right. well, is this why God wants to talk to us and, and we to him? I think to back up a second too, God does talk to us. He doesn't talk mm-hmm. to us, you know, internally. He talks to us externally through his word in the sacrament. And the reason we're prompted to pray is he actually has spoken to us first and given us himself through his word. And so it's a response on our part to pray to him from him talking to us initially. And so why do we pray? What do we get from God when we pray? Well, prayer is not a means of grace. And it doesn't necessarily have the promise of forgiveness of sins. Can God decide to like zap you with forgiveness of sins when you pray to him? Sure, why not? He's God. I don't, I'm not going to say he can't do that, but he's never promised to. Don't we pray forgive us our trespasses? We do. We do. We do. And what I mean is it doesn't have the same kind of promise attached to it. You know, we know that God hears us, but there's not a means by which he delivers that forgiveness to us as a result of our prayers directly in the same way that, you know, an absolution would be or something like that. Thank you for making me be more precise about what I'm saying. But that's, I mean, to... that's an incredibly important thing, though, because this is one of those questions. Like, if I die before I ask for forgiveness for this, will I, will I be saved? And you can make it all about you and what you are sort of trading in God, like prayer is somehow like Jesus points that are transactional, or you can simply make it like our catechism when it talks about the forgiveness. Um, It it, it points us to the place where all forgiveness comes from. Uh, Forgiveness comes from the cross, whether or not you ask for it, 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 Mm -hmm. Jesus died for you. Um, But, but in, in faith, we, we desperately want this forgiveness and even want this forgiveness to be for our neighbors too. Well, that's, I think, you know, just as an aside, this is one of the benefits of confession. It's like, if you forget when you're sitting there at church at the beginning of the service and the pastor gives you 30 seconds of silence or whatever to think of your sins and meditate on the word of God, if you forget to think of one, is it still forgiven? Well, of course it is, because it's not about consciously recalling them and specifically asking from God, please, please forgive me for this. He's he's already told you he will. And when your pastor absolves you, they're forgiven. And we should think of prayer the same way. You know, whether we remember to ask for forgiveness of sins all the time or not, God certainly is forgiving because he's promised to. You know, it's not contingent on some act of ours that he would forgive us. Um, But I guess that brings back to the point you brought up, which is what's the point of prayer then? You know, another way I've heard this posed is um, God already knows everything. So why do I need to bother talking to him? Well, I think it's because prayer is a means by which God, you know, often gives us comfort. And uh, that comfort comes in a couple ways. You know, I don't want to get all kind of juju about this or anything, you know. But uh, one of the things that does happen is if you're burdened by something, you're anxious, you're you're depressed, you're, there's something weighing on you, telling your father about it and telling him that you know that he'll take care of it and he will give you good, whatever that happens to be, even if it's not what you can see, because he's promised to give you good things. Well, that can help alleviate some of that psychological burden. As opposed to the Midwestern 
classic of bottling it up until it spills <laughs> over in a really bad way. I, it, it's almost like our, our, our Father in Heaven knows us. Um, but also the, the catechism is super helpful as we go through these things too, because it points out that like God doesn't need you to pray for this, but he wants you to pay attention to the fact that he's already doing it. And and so mm-hmm. we'll pray that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And, and God's up there in heaven like, oh, finally, you guys, I was going nuts up here, but I was completely impotent and unable to help you until you gave me permission. I who created the heavens and the earth need your help here. No, the good and gracious will of God is done even without our prayer, but we pray in this petition that it would be done among us also. God's will right. is already being done. Show me and also show me how it's good and point me to the places where I can even find it. And then we can even pr- reckon with like, how is God's will done? Well, that that's where he breaks and hinders every evil plan and purpose of the devil, the world and our own sinful nature, which don't want us to hallow God's name or let his kingdom come. And when he strengthens and keeps us firm in his word and faith until we die, this is his good and gracious will. I can see his will in action. I can know I'm a part of it and I can actually feel a little bit of comfort when I feel like everything's going against me and I'm stuck in a country song. <laughs> you have a lot of country songs in your life, the way you talk. I have a lot of baggage. Uh, that, that. I can't, we'll pray about it. Um. <laughs> well, that's good. I do recommend that. That's good. You know, one thing that you brought up that I think is really important that our catechism helps us with is that, you know, there's kind of a cyclical action in prayer. We hear from God in his word. We pray to God. And then where does the answer come from to a lot of the things we worry about? Well, it comes by the form of the promise and encouragement that we read about in the word of God. So, for example, I'm upset. I'm worried about an assignment that I have due. Pastors have assignments too, actually. So I got got this assignment. I got this thing I got to get done. I'm worried about it. I'm worried about what people are going to think. I'm worried about, you know, how it's going to be taken or understood by people. So I pray to God about this. And I say, Lord, you know, please uh, help me do a good job or whatever. You know, I pray my prayer. Amen. Well, where do I go to receive the comfort? Well, I pick up my Bible and there I find things that I, in my Bible, I have a lot of passages circled that are good, comforting promise passages. And, you know, lo and behold, there in all those passages I've circled, I tend to find things that illumine this and remind me that God has heard my prayer and that he cares about me and that he's not just going to kick me to the curb and let me flounder. You know, that's not the kind of God God is. He cares about us. He cares about us so much he gave his son to die for us. So if he's willing to give up his eternal son for the sake of forgiving our sins, well, maybe he just might care about what's going on in other places in our life too. That, that God be praised for it. And, and this is one of those places where you have to return to the fact that if you want to make prayer about stuff, um, it, it becomes your burden now instead of God's gift. Because if, if prayer is about stuff, then it's a transaction. And in the same way with, with uh, to, to quote the hymnist, more money, more problems, um, you, have to, you have to deal with the fact that how many prayers do I have to save up or how many people do I need to pray for me or how mm-hmm. intently do I really need to mean it to get what I want? And then it, it's, it's nice to let God off the hook for when he says no, at least that way, because I can blame me instead of him. That seems more probable. But if prayer is simply God pointing you to the things that he's already doing and granting you comfort, then you're completely right. You don't need to pray at all, but also why wouldn't you? Like in the same way, like you don't need to eat dinner, but like if it's there, why wouldn't you? Well, and it's not just eat dinner. You know, it's not like you're going to Taco Bell here. This is like, you know, really nice, slow cooked prime rib. You know, I mean, this this is the good stuff. smirch my Taco Bell. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, that's, I mean, it's, it's not just, we don't pray, just it's not, we, we shouldn't have the view of prayer that it's like this this meager thing. You know, right. it's actually this this rich, lavish bounty because we get to talk to our father as his beloved children. And mm-hmm. we know, we know because he is our loving father for the sake of Jesus Christ, he hears all of our prayers. Every single one of them is heard. And it doesn't matter. We don't have to gang up on God. We don't got to round up the whole neighborhood to pray for us, to have it count. Right? It can just be one of those little tiny still prayers that we say in the quiet of our hearts. And he still hears that. He hears that just as much as the guy praying on a megaphone down on a street corner somewhere. Right. And and this is where you actually are finally free at last just to talk to God about things. And it took me a long time to get here, uh, honestly, as a Christian. Um, The idea that I could just sort of say, but if you don't, if it's not about what I need to get, but always sort of just to to find comfort in the fact that I have a father in heaven who loves me, uh, well, then what what wouldn't you want to to bring there? If, If it's not like, I don't want to, I, I'm busy. I, I don't, I'm going to come up with eight excuses about why I'm not going to pray right now. And, and in all of it, you're simply free to pray. 
Mm -hmm. And that's again why, you know, there's no right or wrong way to do it. It doesn't have to sound like a prayer on church on Sunday morning. It doesn't have to sound like something that, you know, the evangelical pastor on the TV show that's got 800 million views, um, you know, or, well, I shouldn't say TV. Nobody watches TV anymore, but the guy that's got the sweet TikTok channel, right? You don't have to sound like that guy either. And you don't need the mood music. You can just talk to your father. No, it's probably a good idea to be respectful because he is God after all, but you just talk to him and he's giving well, you the ability to. <laughs> yeah. And there are even forms to kind of help draw those things out. Um, and this is why we have the Lord's Prayer, not just to, to let us pray about the one thing that's on our mind, but to remind us of the whole counsel of God, because if I'm only going to go to God with the thing that I need comfort for, honestly, I'm just going to pray the fourth petition every day until I'm about to die. And then I'll pray the deliver us from evil one. Well, um, you're I, not going to pray the fourth petition, though. You're going to pray your own version, which goes something more like, and give us this day our daily Ferrari. Yeah. Well, that's you could make that out of <laughs> bread. Uh, that's just... <laughs> keep it coming um daily bread has everything to do with the support needs of body of this life um it, and and so if i'm going to then have these these prayers that are given to me by the church um i i can i can sort of ground myself in in all of the things that god is doing and not just sort of the thing that that old adam uh that the inner idolater wants and, and more than that too there are there are forms of, of prayer like one of my favorites is called a collect um and and, and and higher things has talked about this before but i love it because it, it first it makes you sound eloquent and, and i'm just sort of bumbling when it comes to talking but uh, it also it roots your prayer in the reality of scripture, in the things that God has done, loves to do, and wants to continue to do. And so you don't know if this is just sort of like a, is, is this okay or not? But so uh, we have a, we have a call it for, uh, for safe travel. And instead of just sort of stumbling around and be like, I don't know, God, uh, don't let me hit it dear, which is a fine prayer, don't get me wrong. We can go back into the scriptures and, and think of our Sunday school stories about the things that God does. Does he help people travel? And, and we can just reflect on those. And so I can say, oh Lord God, Heavenly Father, uh, you guided Moses and the, the Israelites through the desert through 40 years by a star. You guided wise men to the infant Jesus. And then I can ask him, so too, bring me safely in my destination and finally to my my journey home with you for you live and reign with the, the, the uh, Father and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And all of a sudden, it sounds like I know what I'm talking about just a little bit, but I'm just praying from the scriptures. Well, I think it is helpful. And one of the things I like to do in confirmation class is I kind of teach a basic colic structure, you know, because people always get on, sir, how do I talk to God? Well, okay, there's the address, right? Who are you talking mm -hmm. to? Then there's usually, a, you know, some kind of a doxological phrase, you know, something that's praiseworthy. So, dear God, you are the one who hung the stars in the heavens. Then there's, you know, some kind of, of, of desire or request that people often make, you know, um, so order nature that, you know, the spring works like it should and we get crops in the ground. And then you have kind of a concluding doxology for you live and reign forever and ever with the sun and the spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. And it's not that complicated of a thing, but when you kind of I know I'm kind of a methodological person. So if you think about the different parts, it makes you sound a lot more sophisticated than you actually are when you pray. And it's all about the show, right? Wait, no, wait. <laughs> Jesus said something about that. Don't make it about the show. <laughs> No, but but it is about sort of going back to the things that that you can actually recognize that that God wants you to pray for. Like he, mm -hmm. he if he takes people from point A to point B, then then he likes to do that. If he heals people, then then he does like to do that. And sometimes we need to ground it not just in sort of what do I see in this minute, but what God actually is in in reality, ontologically. If we want to use a big fancy word, uh, because if I'm just praying in this minute, like well, it's the same as stubbing your toe in this minute. You don't think or feel anything other than it hurts. But mm -hmm. there's a lot more to reality. And in the same way, there's a lot more to who God is than to whether or not he's answered, well, your thousand dollar petition. Um, and, and that that's good. Well, you know, I think the last thing I would I, I try to teach the you know anyone I teach about prayer is that we shouldn't look down on people who pray differently than we do. Um, you know, you know I, I, one of the things I've run into in my time is that you have people who really like the traditional style of prayers and then they can kind of look askew at people who kind of pray from the heart, you know, and then mm -hmm. vice versa, the people who pray from the heart. And if you're reading a Psalm out of scripture and those words are your words and you're praying them, they look at you funny. And I don't think it really matters exactly how you go about praying. I think it's important. You just do it and you mean what you say. Right. I like that. I think we kind of tackled it. Pastor, thanks for talking about prayer. Well, thanks for uh, having me on to do it. Take care. Till next time.